otherwise too much. The thing I want to talk about now is the so-called completeness of the basis. Okay. Completeness, it means what? It means your basic vector should be able to represent every vector in the space. Remember what is a vector? How do you represent vector? It represents a linear combination of the basis vector, right? If I have a 2D plane, then the X and Y can represent the 2D plane very well. The set of x hat, y hat is the com is the basis for a 2D space. 2D real space. Okay? What if I have a vector sticking out? Can it be represented by x hat, y hat? No, right? Then it's not complete if you only say that x and y. The complete basis is needs to be. What is the complete basis? To represent a 3D real space. Exactly. X, Y, Z. For 3D real space. We know this very well. Okay. Right. In general. Now, if... I put a set, I just call it I, it means I have a set of basis vector. If it is complete, right, with, of course, I equal to zero all the way to N minus one. What dimension is this? N, right? Then any vector can be represented as a combination I equal linear combination of this basis vector, which you know already, alpha I times I, right? Alpha I times I, you know this very well already. Okay, that is good, right? There's nothing special. But then from here, we're going to derive a very important property of completeness, which will be very useful in the later derivation. What if now I apply for any vector, I apply the basis vector to it to form the, what is this? What does this mean again? What does it mean? Oh, or V on J, right? We find the inner product of J and J is a basis vector on V, right? So what does it look like? J operates on summation of i equal to zero n minus one alpha i i okay looks very weird but do not forget this is just addition and the uh, linear we already showed that it obeyed the distribution law right earlier in the bracket operation so this is equal to i equals zero to n minus one alpha i j i do you agree because basically this is just a number times first vector another number times another vector plus another number times the third vector do a inner product with j like this this is just like j operates on alpha zero zero plus alpha one one all the way to alpha n minus one n minus one right and this is just equal to alpha zero j zero plus alpha one j one plus all the way to alpha n minus one j n minus one make sense that is what it is saying here what is j dot i? What is the inner product between j and i? What is j and i? What is j and i? What are they? What we just said. What is this? The basis vector. So what is the property of the basis vector again? Say again. 
they are orthonormal to each other, right? So this becomes what? Yes. They are orthonormal to each other in this class, in quantum computing, delta ij. And it is only one if i equal to j, right? So this is equal to alpha j. Correct? Because all other i are zero. And you can see it from here already. J dot zero is zero. J dot one is zero until J dot J is one. And then J dot N minus one is zero. You only have alpha J left. Make sense? So alpha J equal to this one, okay? Then now I'm going to substitute one into two. You have V equals to summation I equal to zero N minus one. Alpha J is just a number, right? So alpha J equal to J dot J in a product V. Then alpha I is just equal to I in a product V. This is just alpha I. Okay? Yeah. Because they are the basis vector, they need to be orthonormal in this class. Now, we can do what? What is I times V? Is a number, vector, or matrix? I dot V is what? Scalar, right? If a scalar, I can move it to the back, right? There's no problem of doing that. It's a number, I can move it around. Correct? And then I have this associative law. I can also do this first. And just now when we say what is the outer product of a matrix, what is that? It's a matrix. So it basically see a matrix applied to a vector do the summation is a vector, which makes sense. So this is telling me that, but V is, does not depend on I, right? This one is just equal to summation i zero n to n minus one i i the whole thing apply to v v equal to something apply to itself no matter what v okay any v then this guy what is this guy what it means that it does not change me no matter what what I? It has to be identity. Okay? So if your basis is complete, then finally, we have this very important equation. Summation i equal to 0, n minus 1, i, i, is just identity. Just an identity. It means the outer products of all the basis states, and you add them together, the sum of the outer product of the basis state is an identity matrix. And when you have identity, you can insert to anywhere in your equation, right? Like multiplication, you can multiply one at any place. It doesn't change anything. Then you can simplify many things. You will see that. Now let me, maybe I will stop here today. Look at an example, yeah, I swapped that one. Let's just go back to example of the eigenvector of C. Sigma C, right? We just say that it is zero equal to one zero, one equal to zero one. I do want you to really understand this, what I'm saying. I say zero and one here in the cat is meaningless. It's just a name. You can say first vector, second vector. Happy, unhappy, okay? Yes, no. But then this is math, one zero and zero one because they are really column representation. But the first one is talking about, you have one part of the first vector. Second one is a zero part of the second vector. And since we're using the eigenvector as the basis, then of course you have one part of the first vector for your first vector, right? Your, your second vector has, one part of the second vector as the first vector. 
Okay. Then let's take a look if this is true. This time, okay, let me write this down. N minus one. Can you tell me first of all? Right. What is N in this case? What's the, huh? two? What's the meaning of N? How many bases, which means the dimension of the space, right? So if this is two dimension, n equal to two. So what I care is summation i equal to zero, two minus one, i, i, okay? Then I spell out the summation. i equal to zero means zero, zero. And then the last one is one, one. Is this okay? Now, what do you do? How do you see the, do the outer product of one of zero, zero? Again, zero, I just write it down as zero, uh, I mean, one zero. Right? Bra is one zero. For one, the bra is, the cat is zero one. The bra is zero one. Now, can you do the matrix multiplication? Row times column. Our row only have one element. The column only have one. The first one is one times one. One times zero. Zero times one. Zero times zero, right? The second one is what? Zero times zero. Zero times one. One times zero. One times one, which is equal to one zero 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 plus zero 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 one that is equal to one zero zero one which is the identity matrix in the two-dimensional space yeah someone say to the power oh, n <coughs> So I spend so much time, I don't think other classes will do this, right? Because I know that I also learn quantum computing myself. What are the most difficult concepts? If you can understand this, then the rest will be easy. That's why I keep repeating this naive and trivial step. You need to really understand every tiny bit, okay? How about the eigenvector of X? of sigma x. Does this span the space? Now we call it plus, call it minus. We are representing in the sigma c eigenvector basis. So if you forgot, it is one square root, one, one. You did this in your assignment already. Minus is one square root of one negative one, yes, okay. Right, so let's just check, repeat. What is the N in this case? What is N? Huh? Two, because it is still two dimensional. We have two bases, okay? So summation I equal zero to two minus one. I still call it I because this doesn't matter. It's just a number. I try to index it, right? If I spell it out, basically I'm talking about plus, minus it's just a name i call it plus minus if you really want to call it zero and one no problem as long as you don't get confused with the eigenvector of sigma c okay it's just a name but what really matter is when you substitute the column vector the plus it becomes one square root two one one this becomes one square root two of one one but the row Minus is one square root two of one negative one, one square root two of one negative one. Okay, is this clear? The rest is just math. Okay, so let me, let me move a little bit faster. 
this becomes one half because I have two square root two, one, 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 right? One half, one negative, one negative, one, one, right? Because one times one, one times negative, one negative, one times one negative, one times negative, one, right? So if you really do this, it becomes one half, one plus one equal to two. Actually, quantum computing is very easy. We always just deal with zero and one and one plus one, which is equal to one zero one. Again, identity. Yeah. So now we Okay. This is in the sigma c basis, right? This is not sigma x. Is that what you're asking? Yeah. Why, if I put in the sigma x basis, then it is becomes this, right? You are saying that why they are different in different bases, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Sigma x basis vector, uh, eigen vector, if you represent in the sigma c basis, basis, it is in this form because it is equal to zero plus one square root. Right. It's just like what we discussed before, which is wrong concept, but it illustrates pretty well. This is like the sigma c basis, and this is like the sigma x basis. So for a basis vector here, for example, plus, this is the plus, this is plus, one plus. If you represent the sigma C basis, you have one component due to zero and one component due to one. And that's why you will write it as one, one. If I write it as one zero, then it means I only have one component due to zero. All right, it makes sense? Yeah, I think. Okay. So Good question. Sigma yeah. x and sigma x basis is just one zero. Right? Yes. Yeah. Because you are just asking, how do you represent my eigenvector in the basis formed by my eigenvector? Right. So my first eigenvector equals to my first eigenvector, just like this. Okay. Good, good question. I right? will need to make this very clear because. If you want to continue to work on quantum computing, you will see all the algorithms keep changing the basis because they make it easier to understand, easier to manipulate if you change the basis. The physics is still the same. But if you don't do this well, you will get lost. Right? So this is a very good discussion. Any other questions? Okay, so uh, let me take the attendance quickly. Right.